Um, uh, my name is Brandon Moll, and we are going to be doing, like, we're going to be kind of improvising a story for you with your help. Um, hopefully this will kind of reveal some stuff about process. Um, the kind of these, we've got a talented panel of authors here, and hopefully this will give you, a, um, with your help, will give you a sense of kind of what we do as we're trying to brainstorm out a story, as we're trying to lay down a plan for the outline of the story. We'll probably be, be designing middle grade-ish, novel-ish kind of idea. Um, but first, let's introduce everybody. Do you want to just um, start here and go down? We have Henry, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, hi, it's on. Uh, my name is Henry. Uh, my background is actually in film and animation. I was a concept designer for the for so many years, and some of my action projects as well. And my uh, first book that I've written is Ninja Timmy. There are actually three of them, but the first one now in English with Random House. Yeah, 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 give me a fun fact, if you got a fun fact, yeah. Uh, grew up in Tanzania, Pakistan. Oh, wow. So very international. Yeah. Cool. Okay, Kirk Scroggs. Hi, my name's Kirk, and I live in L.A., and I write a new series called Snoop Troop, and I've worked with the Muppets and Wiley and Grandpa's Creature Features. I love drawing hairballs and alien droppings of bean casseroles and all sorts of nonsense, so. Good, weird, yeah. <laughs> Which is good for writers, we like weird details. Um, Liz Climo. Hi everyone, I'm Liz Climo. Um, I am an animator, I've been an animator on The Simpsons for 10 years, and I also have a Tumblr blog called lizclimo.tumblr.com. Um, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I, um, I have a book of comics that came out last year called The Little World of Liz Climo, and they're all comics from that, that blog. And um, this is my first picture book, Rory the Dinosaur, Me and My Dad, and that came out this last spring. And there's another one coming out uh, next spring. Oh, and I like pizza. That's my fun fact. Uh, <laughs> so rare. I'm so rare. Very yeah. unusual. <laughs> a major anomaly, yeah. <laughs> Different than Tanzania. That's a little more odd. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Annabeth. Um, I'm Annabeth, and this is Connor. Hi, I'm Connor. And uh, we wrote the book Shivers, The Pirate Who's Afraid of Everything, which came out this year. And Shivers 2 is coming out next year. Uh, we both live in LA. Um, you want to yeah, talk about uh, we've things? also both worked for a company called Story Pirates, not to be confused with our own little pirate here. Um, and Story Pirates is a company that teaches kids creative writing and then turns their stories into a sketch comedy musical. And that's what we do in LA. Yeah, and a fun fact about us is uh, we once ran a half marathon together, and then we never ran again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we got engaged last week. Hi, uh, my name is Aaron Nell Steinke, and I'm a cartoonist, and I'm also a teacher. Um, I've been teaching elementary school for about five or six years, and um, I've been making comics for about ten. I went to school for animation before that, and um, f fell in love with making books, and um, gave up on the whole uh, world of film and television. Uh, I, uh, my newest book is called The Zoo Box, and it's published by First Second Books. My wife uh, wrote it with me. And we are up for an Eisner Award this year for the best publication for kids up to seven. So we'll find out what happens tonight. Um, oh. <laughs> I, a fun fact, I guess, is that, oh, I wasn't prepared for this, but I remember in, this is a weird one, just came to me. When I was in seventh grade, I tried to convince all my friends that I was related to Bruce Lee because I was a big Bruce Lee fan. So. <laughs> yeah, he's my cousin. He is, he is. Watch this. I'll kick the fence really hard. <laughs> Um, and my name is Brandon Mole. I write lots of adventure novels like Fable Haven and Beyonders and Candy Shop War and Five Kingdoms. I designed the Spirit Animals series for Scholastic. Um, very nerdy about making up worlds and, and, and telling stories. Um, and a fun fact would be I once won a pudding eating contest in the park behind my grandma's house in Redondo <laughs> Beach. Um, so to get things started, we are going to try before your eyes to build a story. Now building a story can be sort of hard, but I think we have a lot of brains, and it sounds like a diversity of brains have done lots of interesting things. So we're gonna put our weird brains together and we're gonna ask your weird brains um, to help us um, so that we can walk through the process of how we would develop a novel um, or how we would develop a story. And you know, theoretically we could do a, a, a picture book, but I'm thinking we'll, we'll do something kind of big so it'll take up more time, <laughs> I don't know. But it'll be kind of fun because we have a bunch of talented artists and they will kind of draw characters as we make up characters. Um, there are so many different places you can start to write a novel. In fact, maybe let's have a preliminary question. 
um, to, to our panelists of where do you start when you wrote a book or when you wrote your most recent book, where did you start? Like, wh like you know, where did you start the process of coming up with this story that you, that you wrote? Uh, well, you need, for me, you need a, a conflict between characters. You need a world. Uh, so I just start sort of spinning my wheels in my head. Uh, what's, uh, what's a cool character? Uh, what's his or her secret? Where do they live? Um, and then, of course, what, like, what's the baseline for them? What's the standard, the normal for them? What happens that takes them out into the story itself? Okay, so who the character is, and what's the big trouble that'll get things rolling? Yeah. That, that, that's where you're going, and those are those are very same places to go. That's kind of where we'll go as a crowd. Um, maybe everybody ch chime in on. Any, anyone start same place, different place? Um, sort of. I started with Justice, just the character. Um, so I feel like I don't know. That might be kind of backwards for most people. But like, if I do a drawing that I'm like, hey, this this is kind of a cute drawing. Maybe I can build an entire world from this this one character. So that's sort of where I start. No, that's great. Oh, that's really interesting. A anybody else? In anything different or similar? Or? Um, we like to come up with a, like a comic opposite in our main character. So we'll pick like a job um, and list a bunch of things in that job that would that everyone would expect, and then try to come up with some things that no one would expect. Basically, how to make somebody the world's worst at that job, um, and then and pick our favorite one of those and, and sort of run with that. Okay, yes, yes, yes. So, so great comedy by giving them some, some weaknesses that are strategically placed, kind of, right? Yeah, and that's great, that's smart. I, I think for myself, I oftentimes uh, come up with ideas from sketchbooks, so um, if I make a character that just kind of comes out that I like, and I like the look of it, I want to write a story about it. Um, I also have a lot of experience writing about um, autobiography, so personal narratives. Um, I do a comic strip called Mr. Wolf, and it's about me as a teacher, so oftentimes it'll just be, uh, you know, what funny thing happened in the day or what uh, strange and bizarre thing that I said or the students said that I want to um, put in comics format. Yeah, so you're drawn from your real life for inspiration and I, we, I think we all do that in one way or another, right? Um, anything else? I know for me sometimes I'll start with setting, which is weird, but I, I write fantasy adventure novels so sometimes I'll think like, what if there were secret wildlife parks for magical creatures? And then that concept, like, oh, what kind of creatures would live there and who'd want to harm start thinking of who would be interesting characters to go to this place. Um, so it's funny how, how many different ways you can begin, right? I think for us today, let's start, well, it's so hard because like, where do you start, right? Do you start with a character? Do you start with, give, me, give me some ideas for who do we want to see in this story? Give me some ideas for characters. Yeah, what do you want to see? Pyromaniac. You want a pyromaniac. <laughs> Does that inspire anybody? Sure. We're, 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 we're going to take a bunch of things, we're going to kind of think around and then we'll, we'll see how we can merge them, yeah. An accountant. <laughs> Ziardi, you take those two things and that's interesting, right? <laughs> I'm going to burn it down and I'm going to do the math and figure out how much we lost. <laughs> yeah, right here. You want to get inside a mind. You want to have, get inside somebody's brain. Okay, so we can have, we can have imaginary characters. We can be inside a mind with characters in a head. We've got a pyro, we've got an accountant, yeah. A janitor? Okay, yeah, so, so, so here, somebody with that job, yeah. A mermaid who's a shark. Okay, like, so like shark fin mermaid? Maybe a little buffer than your typical mermaid, right? Yeah. A very depressive dinosaur. A depressed dinosaur. So that's already, it's got some comedy built in, right? <laughs> I hate goring people. Like, yeah, cat. Okay, so pyromaniac in Antarctica, and that you get comedy, right? Yeah, or the or the mermaid shark who's a pyro. Okay, yeah. mermaid shark pyro. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Does someone want to make like a like a mermaid shark? Does, does anyone be in, feel inspired can, to draw that? I can draw a mermaid shark. That could be fun. Or can I? I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah. So a mermaid shark who's also a pyro. Yeah, let's, let's do mermaid shark pyro. That's kind of a you know. It's tough because a shark already has like the lower half of a mermaid, but I'll see if I can, let's, let's see what I can. Yeah, see so if you can get a crowd, like well, maybe a little dorsal fin action. Is it, a, is it a mermaid bottom half and a shark top half? <laughs> yeah. well, that's very shark-like though. It's, a serious, it's, a dead it's like a shark with a pretty bit. tail. Yeah. <laughs> right. Shark teeth. Shark teeth? Okay, so like let, let, let's go, we, we have some characters, kind of a stew of characters, right? And we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna maybe draw on the ones that the interest us, or throw out more characters as you think about it. Give me some places, where are some places that the story could be taking place? We had Antarctica as a possible place, so we'll put that on the menu. We got a kid, yes, kid. 
What's a place? Give me a place. A park. A park. A park. That could be fun. A park actually has a lot of visuals and has a lot. Yeah, it has like I attach to parks. Putting it in contest comes to mind. Yeah, right here. On Mars. On Mars. Let's go to another planet. Right here. Alaska. Alaska. Opposite of Antarctica, but similar. <laughs> right? Yeah. Comic Con. Comic Con. <laughs> we, we could have literally any character, basically. <laughs> Comic Con, right? Like a very strange mix of people. Can I borrow your red pen? Thanks. What was that? Death Valley, the opposite of Antarctica, the true opposite of Antarctica, maybe. Um, any of those h h hitting you guys? What are you thinking? I'll do Death Valley. Do you want to see some Death Valley? Only if I can draw the uh, pyromaniac accountant. Okay, you, you give us a pyromaniac accountant. Maybe we, can, maybe we can pick a favorite character, right? Okay. You, you, you draw that, yeah. Give us a pyromaniac accountant. And it, um, I hmm. think I, I want to go to the depressed dinosaur again. Though. This becomes maybe complicated. I'll, maybe I'll go do that one. <laughs> Give us, so we have some places. Give us some, give us a problem. Give us a bad guy. Who's, who's got, give us someone who, who can be an antagonist. Let's see, what do you got? Tax collector. A tax collector. That could be an accountant's antagonist for sure, right? Back here? What? A fireman. A fireman. Uh, an evil I like it. Uh, Always putting out the fires. <laughs> How evil. Yeah, what a jerk. <laughs> I hate that guy. This is going to be twisted, but, it, but that's got potential, right? Like, that's, that certainly ties in with the stuff that we've done so far, right? What do you got? A scuba bear for the shark. Ah, I like that. So he's like, like, like is, this, is this an enemy or a sidekick? He's an enemy. A scuba bear. Do we see a scuba bear? Scuba bear. That, that's possible. That's, that's interesting and weird. I like that. You're thinking like Cartoon Network or something. Yeah. A pack of wild dolphins. Not the, not the tame. They're, these aren't friendly dolphins, no. no. They're a biker gang. Biker gang. Wearing, oh, biker wearing gang studs gang. and leather. Yeah. Mermaid shark what now? Hunter. Hunter. Okay, yeah, we got the mermaid shark hunter. Something that hunts our protagonist. That's a, that's a good jump. Yes. Pirate. Pirate. Oh, yeah. So, I think we're going to the sea on this one. Yeah. I, I, I think a lot of characters. We, we, might be, we might be heading to the sea because that, 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 that's what's... I, I'm feeling everybody, yeah, over there, with the cat and then the dude. I think that um, maybe the pyromaniac accountant is secretly a wizard who transforms into a giant mermaid and the scuba bear into creatures. Okay, like so we, could, we yeah. could give that guy powers. So, so what if this, so we, now we start to try to connect dots, right? So, and that's what you're doing. You're connecting dots for us. Any, anybody want to connect some dots? Yeah, I like, yeah. Um, um, I like the fireman uh, villain. It's, it's like there's like this mermaid who's always trying to get on land and light things on fire. The fireman's always coming back, maybe putting her back in the water um, and really just ruining her day. Yeah, yeah, that could happen. What else we got? Anyone, anyone else want to connect dots? I, I'm seeing maybe we've got like a pyro mentor. Right, like, like maybe the accountant's the pyro mentor who helped who helped train the mermaid, or or, or somehow interacts with the mermaid. Um, that's I'll possible. Him. Go. Him. You'll do him. Yeah. It's a good. tiny bear. Yeah. <laughs> All right, he, he's jumping on. I, I like. I love that we just have artists. I wish I had this in my basement when I'm like <laughs> alone making up stories. <laughs> Let's see, tell us about your uh, tell us about your mermaid shark. What have we done there? Well, that's a mermaid shark, um, and he is a pyromaniac, so he has a match underwater. I don't know how. Maybe that's just like part of his power. He also has shells. That way we can tell he's a mermaid. Um, <laughs> and that's the scuba bear who's evil. And he doesn't like the mermaid shark, but it seems the mermaid shark actually seems to like scuba bear. So I'm not really sure what the conflict is there and why, <laughs> why the bear seems to hate him so much and the shark mermaid really seems to like him. I feel like there's like a like a, a, a like a love like a love going on between them right now you know love. yeah but one of them just wants to be in the sea the other one just wants to light fires neither of them really belong there maybe the the bear might resent the shark because the shark can be underwater all the time and the bear has to go back up oh, and fill his yeah. tank the bears from another <laughs> yeah the bears from another world than our shark yeah i, I see a thought <laughs> Ooh, this, the fireman who's on fire. This is feeling like it just like what it's feeling that. to me I'm is like a sick, twi a sick picture book is what it's feeling like to me. Actually, you know what I mean? Like, like kind of an adult picture book. I think is is what we're creating here.
Because as, as, I th as, as I think like a vast middle grade story, I'm not sure this happens. But as a picture book, this could be fun, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, I, so, 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 maybe, so maybe that's where we're headed with this. Um, I heard a suggestion over here, a reference to Smokey the Bear. An alternate story for the bear is this is Smokey upping his stakes in his job, going underwater to prevent mm. underwater forest fires. Really stepping up his game here. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Yeah, so it could be like Son of Smokey or something. You know Son what I mean? Son of Smokey, yeah. that's yeah. He, has to, title. he has to like, you know, live up to his, his dad's standards and go above and beyond because he's already done so much. You know, he has yeah. to do something extra. Yeah, my old man puts out the, the fires on the dry ground. <laughs> I deal with this one mermaid shark. <laughs> <laughs> she sets islands on fire. It's got to be hard to set fires underwater. Kelp forest fires. Yeah, get the kelp forest, right? Um... Should we? So, so, what do we think? Do we? Do, 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 how would we? How would we shape this story? If we we're going to shape the story, what would be our? What would be our? How, how do we meet these characters, or what's going on when we meet the characters? They would have to have some sort of something in common, or some sort of common place where they all met. If they were all characters in the same story, yeah, and it's a lot of characters. So, typically, stories. I mean, I, I mean, I usually just do one or two characters, so maybe I'm not the right person to ask, but no, no, no. it seems like you have to sort of narrow it down to get the story started, at least to two or three more important characters um, to sort of be the focus of the story. Yeah, just, just a mermaid and her fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very, very kind of twisted. Um, and then, so if we started, so who would we start with? Is, is our main character our mermaid, probably? Our mershark? Oh, um... Sure. <laughs> you know, I find Men sometimes mentored by our angry accountant pyro guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see hands. Thoughts. I feel like we're forgetting about the dinosaurs. Like, what exactly is <laughs> So you're thinking, you're getting all nerdy on me, like fantasy stuff, and I like that, because that, that's where I live. Yeah, so, so there's, this, there's this underwater flame, this sacred underwater flame that the mermaid wants everywhere. Yeah. Mm. Can, we, can we, we have a secret? Yeah, 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 yeah give me a secret. secret. And what is it, and who wants to find it out? Yeah, good, good thinking. Like a uh, built-in conflict. Yeah, 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 yeah. So someone, someone has a secret, or someone has a weakness. Do we right? have a main villain yet, has a villain? We had talked the about the bear, but we got to figure out what I makes gotta, the bear I'd evil. I'd like to take this opportunity to point out that I am definitely not an illustrator. <laughs> 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 but I do have a fireman on fire here. A burning fireman. Oh, that's right, the burning fireman. So, so the burning fireman, is, he's, he's a nemesis, right? So we could go with him. I don't know, I think the pot of dolphins are pretty evil. The pack of dolphins? You know, yeah. When I'm writing, um, I like to come up with a crazy plot twist. Just out of nowhere. Let's just disregard everything we've come up with and just have something crazy appear. Oh yeah, you, you, you want something to come out of left field, something, kind of. a challenge. They're all actually on land. <laughs> it's like a midpoint turn. Yeah. In the, in the middle of the story. I see some hands. Some thoughts. Okay, so she's unleashed a terrible evil, oh. and that, there you go, like, th so there's what, your... what has she unleashed? Yeah. What could be unleashed? I think this is a good audience one, unless someone's got something. But this, what could be unleashed by this, by the extinguishing this flame? Over there, Red Riding Hood. Uh, you're Ruby, I don't know, <laughs> like, you had a red thing. <laughs> I'm, like, dumb. <laughs> what about if uh, she's containing a uh, sea dragon? A sea dragon? Ah, that's good, yeah. That could be, right? Yeah. So the, it, the sea dragon's unleashed. Any, any other thoughts? The, the fire's well, gone out and the sea dragon... Like, it's 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 going out. Dragons. But it's unleashed by the bear, and so they all have to actually come together to fight that monster. And the dolphins and the mermaid have to work out their differences and have, like, hand-to-hand conflict. We've got to turn our friends and our enemies <laughs> into our friends kind of thing, right? I like that. That's not bad. Yeah, baseball hat. A giant popsicle. A giant popsicle. <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> that guy that wanted stuff that came from out of nowhere, he's happy now. He's like, okay, no one's going to see that coming. Yeah, the Roman dude. Uh, no, Thor. Thor. Oh, you're Thor. <laughs> I couldn't see the hammer. I'm sorry. 
There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, nice. And as a second thing that can be released from this interaction or whatever is time travel back to the age of the dinosaurs. The world goes back in time. Okay, okay, okay. Do, do, we, do we like, I like the yacht. I think that, that gives us good access, like an excuse for this, this pyro accountant to have access to our mermaid. And then do we want time travel? Do we want to get back to those dinosaurs? The dinosaurs were what? What was wrong with the dinosaurs? They're depressed. It's, it's They're sorry. depressed, that's oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is a tragic time to trend. Yeah, we got a thought. But okay, yeah, the, the dinosaur could be a time travel. Yeah, we don't have to go back to them. One could come forward, right? In fact, now as, if we're going to try to tie things, right? So maybe when you extinguish the flame, you bring the sea dragon dinosaur guy forward in time, and, and, and this is where our sea dragon comes from. It, it's a very depressed sea dragon dinosaur thing. Is there a place somewhere in the ocean that's a portal to this? Uh, dinosaur at times. Yeah. Is protected by the. Guarded by the flame. Yeah, the uh, pyromaniac mermaid. <laughs> oh, oh, and that's her job. That's her job. Yeah, because she loves that flame. And the accountant tries to get there on his yacht, but is stopped by her. Accountant wants to capture the flame. Oh, okay, yeah, because he's a pyro, so maybe that's his. So maybe he, maybe that's one of our twists, right? We think he's the mentor, but he's really after the, after the flame, and she's supposed to guard it, but he wants to betray her. He wants to double-cross her. Now the story's getting a little bigger, right? Like, it's starting to get a little, a little larger, which is not bad. And the dinosaurs hold some secret that everybody wants. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, and maybe it's even, yeah, what could that be? What could the secret what, be? What if this they know how to extinguish the flame? Because how do you extinguish an underwater flame? Because water clearly isn't doing it. Yeah. So maybe it's like no one can figure out how to put the fire out, but the dinosaurs might know how. They might, be, they might have a secret. I feel yeah. like that's a clear goal for all of the characters, just figure out how to either put the fire out or uh, trap the evil kraken or whatever it is in fire. But you know, they all should be working toward the fire in some way. Yeah, and that's a big deal, right? Like even, even like to pause and think about storytelling, right? Like, the most important, one of the most important things we're going to do is create characters that the reader can care about and then give those characters goals, right? Give those characters things that they want to accomplish and then we create obstacles for those goals. And I mean, that's right at the heart of where a story is going to come out of, right? Is, is characters with goals and stuff that's stopping them from accomplishing them. So the mermaid, let, let, let's get clear. Let, let's have you, get, we'll have panelists try to clarify some stuff for us. So what is the mermaid's okay, goal? Okay, so Brandon, can you please recap everything? Scroll that scroll that we've... has the, the formula. Well, what's the formula? The formula, <laughs> the formula for what? For the flame? For releasing the flame. Oh, oh, for releasing the flame. Okay, so there's a formula for it. We do that. Wait, so, so who wants that? Who wants the formula? So I like the stream of consciousness thing. The stream of consciousness. Maybe we should start from the beginning. Like, what's the first moment in the story? And, and then we do panel number one. And then we can continue on. Idea. So that we watch, okay. you, watch the story evolve as we go. Okay, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Brandon, nice. if you could give us a quick, succinct, ra you know, uh, summation of everything we've covered so far, that'd be Try great. to sum it up? Okay. So, yeah, here's me trying to do the math and tie it together. So we have got a pyromaniac mermaid who, a pyromaniac mershark, who is entrusted to guard a sacred, un unquenchable flame. But and she has been mentored by a pyromaniac accountant who resides on a fabulous yacht. Um... And he is befriending her with the ulterior motive of extinguishing this flame and releasing a depressed sea dragon that comes from prehistoric times. Right? That's exactly right. Wow. Yeah. Is that pretty close, but pretty good? Verbatim. And so, so our, mer, our, our mershark wants to protect this flame. Our accountant wants to destroy the flame. So that's pretty basic. I mean, that, that, that's almost overly simple, right? But we, we got an hour, right? <laughs> so, so, so what's a good first panel? The flame, right? The flame, the mermaid at the flame? Yeah, I think a good way to start Mer -shark a book at the like this is like with an opening image, you know? And so we can start with like the impending doom of the flame. The flame. The flame. <laughs> okay. How, how do the, the, the dinosaurs play into that again? They don't. But well, well, so I, I think our I, I think it might work to have our dinosaurs be accessed by the flame, like make the sea dragon the dinosaur kind of thing, right? So it's like a depressed sea dragon dinosaur. 
right? I, I was trying to tie things together and tighten it up. We could add more stuff. Yeah. Ooh, so maybe the, maybe the dinosaur did this to himself, huh? Maybe the dinosaur created. Yeah, we're that, that, that's like uh, fleshing out world building and backstory. Where'd the flame come from? Do we have do we have a backstory for our flame? Like, like does something occur to you guys for a backstory for our flame? The first flame ever created by man. Ooh, this is the original flame. This or is the, the, the first flame, and it was not extinguishable by water. And then it was stolen by a sad dinosaur. We could also somehow make it, um, like, dinos if it's a dinosaur dragon, it could be fire-breathing, and that could also have to be how he harnessed it somehow. Okay, oh, okay, if it's a fire-breathing sea dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but that does tie in, right? Because... <laughs> yeah, it brings it together, <laughs> <Yeah>. which helps. <laughs> <laughs> we're always... <laughs> so, so if we have, we're going to originate, we're going to start the story. So here's the flame. The flame so deep in the ocean. Okay. okay. So is the next one, so we have, we have the flame, is the next one an accountant scheming and dreaming, or is the next one uh, uh, the, our, our mermaid do, uh, involved in some sort of action, right? We, we, we always want action. When we meet the character, we want the story to be in motion, right? Was, was it a pirate mermaid? What? Okay, so it, it, no. pyro, pyro mermaid. Yeah, Sorry. pyromaniac. Sorry. Okay. And, and mer shark, technically, right? Does she have the flame in her palm, like the palm of her hand? Is she, like, controlling it? So you're saying that we could zoom out, and she's like... We could go there. Um, He's giving her a human head. Oh, yes. No, that's good. That's good. It's okay. it's yeah, because it, that, that's what's fun is everybody's. Everybody's everybody's brainstorming it out. <laughs> Where shark? Oh, that's cool. I like that. Okay, I see some hands. Let's, let's let people chime in. Yeah. Okay, so we could be introduced to like, you know, he could be reading a scroll or he could be holding a meeting and he could be, he could be like kind of giving us a little bit of exposition of what's going on, right? Or he could be, I, for the way my head works, I'd go, he's probably, we probably first see him on the deck searching. He's searching for this mermaid and then we'll, and then we'll unfold the, the reason why, right? Like, like I, I love to show action happening and then kind of unfold the reason why after the action because it just makes it feel a little more subtle. Yes. The dinosaur gets stuck in the portal trying to travel through time, so his head's in one era and his body's in another. I like your weird brain. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. Let's do Captain America shirt and then the other dude. Okay, so, so this is about, so it's about power, and, it, and it's about limiting the water supply. That is an angle we could go. Yeah, this guy. And then uh, the Mershark has to go to Poseidon for help. To Poseidon. So yeah, there we go. We're bringing in something new. But get, get Poseidon in there. And that Poseidon, it's always fun in a story to bring in something with resonance, right? You can bring in something that people know, like Poseidon, right? Yeah, there you go. Okay, so he is scared of water, and he wants, yeah, 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 so he can't get down in the water. So he's, that's why he's got to trick the Mershock. I like that. That's good thinking, right? I think that's great. Yeah, that's and it's kind of it's fun to have a guy that's on a yacht and afraid of water, right? Yeah, we like to give him some weaknesses, you know, something that might stop him eventually. Plus, we've got a lot of, like, dueling things here. We've got fire underwater. We've got a mermaid shark, you, you know. Yeah. All, it's all on the level. And, and, and we, can, we can asterisk this right now, right? Like, if this was me. If I was trying to write a middle grade novel, I would not write this story. <laughs> because we're getting a lot of very weird, like we're going weird, we're going super weird. And like, like, like there's only so much weird that a story can sustain, yeah. can right? You know what I mean? Quick? But if we're, gonna get, if we're gonna make it silly, like, like, like if we're gonna keep it lighter and sillier, 
then that's what you charge hard on, right? So it's, it's all about, the, like, the kind of story I write is more like questy, group of friends, and, like, uh, and, and so I wouldn't go down this road. But if, but if I were a picture booky kind of kind of writer, or if I was going really, like, farcical, this, then you can go really over the top, like we're going, like, with lots and lots of weird, weird, weird... Does that make sense? Thoughts? Yeah, we deal with this a lot in our book. Uh, I like to call it, when it gets like this, bananas on bananas, when it's just piles and piles of bananas crazy stuff. And we love leaning into that, but we always try to keep a balance in some way, some character to be the straight man, to play the comedy off of. Right, yeah. Um, it almost, I almost want to ask, like, what's something normal that happens in this story? Right. You know, Very just ground it a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's normal. really good, because I, I, I think we all kind of feel that, right? It's almost slippery because it's so weird, right? Um, I see hands. The guy on the wall, I haven't heard from you before. That's cool, and, and that, that, that's a good intro moment, right? And, that, and that's a real, that, those are real world kind of issues, right? So we kind of connect it to our reality a little bit, right? So it makes it a little more relatable. Um, this guy. Ooh, that's not a bad start, right? Like, 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 like so if it started with, um, if it started with the account, like, you know, if we start, it would almost be amusing if we start on the fire and this is a fire the accountant has started and, and like we see his pyromania, we see him raging and then he's getting on his boat and going, like that's not a really sweet picture book. <laughs> but like that's, that's a good idea for a potential intro. Yeah, I like that idea as an intro. Yeah, back there? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, 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 so yeah, the wear shark could be imitating a wear shark, which is a very sad, weird story. Right? <laughs> can, I, can I chime in with something? So I, go, I like go, go, please. When, yeah. when I'm working on stories, I like to try to, yeah, bring it back to like the normal. So we have all these crazy characters, like, why aren't they doing something normal? And that's kind of the funny thing. So maybe one of them, it's, it's their birthday. And really, uh, the, it's maybe the accountant's birthday or the mermaid's birthday. Um, maybe the mermaid's actually. Uh, trying to get the flame, or no, the accountant's trying to get the flame for his, his flame, the uh, dinosaur. And really, the mermaid's, it's her, it's her flame. It, she's keeping it and keeping the world alive with that flame. But the accountant really loves this dinosaur, really wants to get that flame for, for that dinosaur's special birthday. Cool, yeah. So it's the dinosaur's birthday? Is the dinosaur what? It's the dinosaur's birthday? It's the dinosaur. Okay, birthday. sorry, I just wanted to know that. I'm thinking I'll of Jenny's a birthday book. I'll, do <laughs> I'll draw a cake, I love it. And you have a birthday dinosaur and he'll do a cake. And we can have that side by side. Yes? So a bunch of teenagers are having weird dreams and this is what they are, and that would seem about right. Because <laughs> it is very weird and like like dreamlike, you know what I mean? Like these ideas are so odd, right? But yeah, no, no. Like if you're trying to make it make sense, that's a good that's a good attempt. <laughs> Back there, yeah. Okay, so that is nice because you're tying stuff together again, right? So that's a good excuse to have Scuba Bear have a purpose. That the accountant's scared of water, and the accountant um, is trusting Scuba Bear to bond with this mermaid. And that's, and yeah, that's, that Scuba Bear is on a mission, and Scuba Bear is nefarious because he's the sidekick. Because he felt like a sidekick to me from the start. He's the sidekick of the accountant. That makes sense, right? Yeah. I feel like Scuba Bear is always really in a bad mood, cranky. He's like the Zazu in The Lion King. He's like always implementing the rules, that kind of guy. I like that, because that gives some personality, right? Yeah. Could, could somebody give me the name of the dinosaur whose birthday it is? Frederick. Uh, Frederick. 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 We, 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 we can have a name auction, too. Do, do we want l more names? Yeah, let's give me some more. Yeah, yeah. Um, Frederick Hardy, the name of a dinosaur. <laughs> I think that's brilliant. Hardy's cute. Um, thoughts. I see thoughts. Tie-dye shirt, and then... What was your name? Ruby. Ruby. Yeah, I don't even know. I'm like the worst. <laughs> what am I doing here? Okay, go. What if the accountant and the scoop bear are looking for the shark mermaid and the engine trouble, so their yacht breaks down, and then that's when the mermaid sees them and it goes to help them, and that's how you bring the characters together. It's 
Okay, so the mermaid's there to help. Yeah, so, so, so you're saying they're not even looking for the mermaid, maybe? No, they are. They are, and they just have, they have the lucky happenstance of, yeah, yeah, breaking down nearby. It might be nice to, um, to kind of take a step back and think about, rather than like what the characters are doing, sort of what makes the characters interesting or special. I mean, I think we kind of talked about that, but... No, um, that's good. You're right. So, like, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of different characters, but, like, you know, what, what's the story behind the shark mermaid? Like, why, why is he a shark mermaid? Do... Does he is he pretending to be a mermaid? Is he did, were, was his mom a mermaid and his dad a shark? Like what what's his story? Okay, yeah, create a mythology behind it almost. Like 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 where where this shark mermaid come from? He was tasked from? by the dinosaur back in the day, back thousands of years ago, to protect the flame. Tasked. Okay, so so, so, so this this is an old mission, but she's like, where did it come from? Like like what's what's the history of this? So someone give me that. What's the, what's the history of this And like, does he, does he want this task? Is he excited about this task? Or is he like, oh man, I don't want to, I wanted to be a, you know, yeah, an bored. accountant or whatever. Maybe he did something wrong and was sort of cursed, like Atlas, to, to 15 minutes. guard this thing. Um, <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> I was letting that dude know I saw his sign. <laughs> so he was saying maybe, like Atlas, he's, the, the, the mer shark has been cursed. It was cursed. a burden that was like... Mm -hmm. Yeah. A burden placed upon the mersh shark mm. to guard the flame. What did he do wrong? Okay, yeah, that's what great. Got him in this? What, do, do you guys want to want to what did this what did this mersh shark do wrong? What was the mistake that made the mersh shark guard the flame? Yeah, there. Sorry. The mersh shark and the account are really the same person. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Mind blown. It's so like by night becomes the, the mersh shark, by day is afraid of water and an accountant. And he's trying to catch this mersh shark and he doesn't know it's himself. This is like a psychological thriller. Guys, I'm really into this cake. Um, <laughs> can someone please tell me how old Frederick Hardy is? Uh, uh, yes, this uh, adult dressed up as a young girl. Yeah. Oh, it's a real young girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Turning 25. Looking good. Life. This kid's got something. The flannel body of the teddy bear. What if the accountant is actually the Mershark's father? And he's the accountant for the military, and the, the, the military wants the flame for, for a special project. Okay, that, that gives us a good, like a, like a reasonable excuse why the accountant wants this flame, and it gives us relationships, because one of the biggest things in any story as we build a story is the relationship between the characters, right? Like, I'd say n number one is having good characters that the reader can care about. Number two is having the characters matter to each other, right? Yeah. And, and, and those relationships can, can make them matter to each other. You, gotta, you look like you're thinking. You got a thought? Me? Yeah. Oh yeah, I was just thinking, uh, we take a lot of our writing from improvising and a, a general rule in improv is your scene is going to be more interesting if you know each other before you come in. You know, you don't want to watch people saying, Hi, you know, this is my name, this is all these basic facts, but if you already have a background and a history, it's so fraught and interesting, so that's what I was thinking about. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good principle. Another good story thing is dilemma. If you've if you make your main character face a, a dilemma, say between two good things or two bad things, like I, either save the hero or true love, have true love. Yeah, that's good. So, so give your characters tough choices, right? Tough choices. Tough choices where you know there's not a clear black or right or right or wrong. It's it's a which of these two good things am I going to do? Because I can only do one, right? Exactly. Yeah, no, that's that's very smart. So, what would be what would be a dilemma that we could introduce? Wait, I, I see uh, Ruby. Yes. Yeah. So the flame is ransom. The flame is ransom to the to the evil wicked teddy bear. That's a whole different way to take it, right? But we could take it down that road. Yeah, that, that, that's good. Back here, Thor, mighty Thor. So to tie it together again. Yeah. Birthday party is on the yacht, but they don't have any fire to light candles on the cake. 
I like it. That, that uh, we, we got an excuse. To light a cake. Dude with a beard. Haven't heard from you. Okay, yeah, so Mershark, yeah, that's good. I like that. That's a, that's a potential dilemma, and that's, that's good thinking. That's sound thinking. Um, guys, thoughts. What, 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 let, 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 let's go broad. What are we liking? What do we think this needs? G it needs give, me pro give, give me pros and cons. Give me pros and cons what, to what we've done so far. We like the accountants. We, we like the ocean setting, the yachts, um, the, the flame, the old flame. But it lacks structure. It needs a, a middle... Uh, uh, a beginning, middle, and end. Clearly. Right. And probably just one character should be a pyro. I think we're getting a little pyro. Yeah, we maybe over pyroed it, huh? Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I'd like to. So um, I remember reading a long time ago about the musician PJ Harvey, and she mentioned when she writes music, if the song isn't working, she takes out the stuff that she likes. And so it may be that we have to actually eliminate something that we like to find out that it wasn't really working all along and it was actually hindering us. So I would like to take out the flame. <gasps> oh, Whoa. there you go. No, that's a thought. That's yeah. yeah. Because then we're still left with some interesting characters. Like, why are they all in this world together? You know, why is there a mermaid shark and an accountant that are, you know, interacting with each other? <laughs> I feel like if, if, yeah. if it's going to be weird, it's okay to make something really weird, but there still has to be, like, a bit of structure and, you know, something that someone can relate to, even if it's like in a completely unrelatable world, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Let's think about uh, the end of Act Two. There's always three acts in the story. The end, the, end, the end of Act Two is when everything goes wrong. We call it all is lost. Right, our what low point, right? Yeah, our low point in the story, so, kind of. The low point, and the Act Three is when the hero rises again. And I think the reason why we like stories at all is because we want to be that person in the third act. Nor, nor, normal life is we end at, at the end of Act Two. We give up, but in, in storytelling, the hero rises up again. We overcome, right? And, and 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 part of the fun of a good story is to see someone get really painted into a corner and really be down and out, and then find a way to overcome. And that's that's always if if it works, it's thrilling, right? Like 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 if you're like, I didn't think he could get out of it. But that makes sense given who this character is, and this could have worked, and that, that can be so satisfying, right? I know another thing we like to do is um, we sometimes like to figure out what our character really wants, and we don't end up giving it to them, but we give them something that you know maybe they have needed the whole time. So maybe this diner or this accountant thinks he needs a flame to make this birthday party happen, but at the end we give him some, but we we might not get that thing, um, and instead we get something that we, he you, you know he realizes that. Oh, all along, I've actually needed whatever. Something else. Something a friend. Else. Yeah. The shark, friend. The shark yeah, mermaid. Yeah, a shark friend, you know. A fricasseed Or to mer overcome shark. my fear of the water or... Um, yeah, yeah, overcome something. Yeah. yeah. I see some thoughts. Okay, so, so what if yeah. they meet the mer shark and the mer shark tells them that there's this flame <laughs> yeah, the coral becomes this beautiful gift for the dinosaur, right? That's not bad thinking. I like that. Yeah, yeah, that's good thinking. Um, we are running really short on time. We are almost done, but give me your thought. Uh, what about the Frankenstein arm that has scared the baby? Maybe he's scared of the zombie trying to eat his brain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's all we 
is a possibility. That guy looks very scared. He, he, yeah, he, he looks like he's, yeah, he's, he's worried about something, right? I like that. Well, you, there could you be a zombie brain. underwater, like in the Italian classic horror film, Zombie, where the zombies actually swim underwater and attack sharks. Let's, let, let's, let's have our panelists give like a, like, like a wrap-up thought, because we're kind of, we're, I think we're, we're, we're through on time. Um, you saw how, like, like today, I think, what we kind of did was, we saw how you could do a big brainstorm and have a lot of pretty fun ideas, and sometimes it doesn't tie together. Like, I, I, I felt we didn't get this fully tied together. It would take some more time and thinking. And this is partly why it's good to practice and be professional and take a lot of, like for me, I'll daydream about a story for years before I'm ready to, to like commit myself to give six months to a year of my life to write this novel, right? Like I'll let it cook. And it, for me, it, it cooks, it becomes like a cool movie in my mind and then I want to write it. Um, I, I, I think everybody did a good job trying to take a bunch of disparate elements and, and combine them into a story. What, give me just, everyone give me a favorite like maybe a takeaway from this story that we tried to build, right? Like what's, what's a takeaway for you or for the audience on, that, that relates to story time, storytelling? Let's start at the end and come back this way. Well, I really like that we just, we came up with something out of nothing and you know, we don't have a cohesive narrative yet and it's not perfect, but there's some things that we could take out. If we can take out one grain of uh, something that we liked from it, like I really love the second drawing of the accountant in, in the dinosaur that you did. Um, and I mean, I, you could do, all you have to do is so like having a sketchbook and just throwing junk out there, um, or even having peers to throw ideas together with, or doing collaborative comics or jam comics. Like, you can really come up uh, with some fully formed ideas out of that, or just do it for fun. Uh, similarly, I think just yeah, we've come up with so many ideas in an hour, you know, all together, and we've got a lot of stuff that sticks, and just figuring out what every character wants, and then, and then after that, you know, this, if we had another hour here, we'd start editing and slicing out some of the, the things that maybe weren't sticking as much. And the great thing about that is then you have those characters for a completely different story. We've thrown out so many characters that'll show up in later books or different series, and they're never lost. They're never a bad idea. Yeah, and it, I mean, in a way, it seems like we were just sort of like, collectively brainstorming just like a whole bunch of stuff and you know a whole bunch of ideas that maybe necessarily wouldn't ever go somewhere but then in that whole pile of ideas there might be one like this is kind of interesting like what is what can we do with this character and how could this character maybe interact with this character and you can maybe build something pretty exciting from there I like that we ended with zombies and Frankenstein <laughs> <laughs> Seems Thank you cutie pie <laughs> and uh, I I just kind of watch this whole process and realize this is exactly what I do. I like sit on the floor and just get like plain white paper and spread it out and start doodling like crazy ideas. And they might be just as unrelated as all the stuff we've come up with tonight, but it, you, you eventually, it cohesives into a story. So this was cool. Yeah, I mean, I think that this shows you all how we work as well. We throw out ideas and that's, the, I, that's how we come up with these stories. Imagination works that way. And I think we came away with some pretty interesting um, characters and a, a plot line. I mean, it, for me, it's still, the baseline would be the, the birthday party. Um, now I'm thinking one step further, what if uh, it's the accountant's daughter having the birthday party and she, she really, really wants the special flame and his dilemma becomes to steal it because it's not really I do this for my daughter kind of thing, yeah. yeah. So, um, but it, like we said, we need, we need more time to get through that, to take away some elements, add some elements, and see where we land. To get it all working. One principle that I kind of liked from, from what we did today is the idea that sometimes you take very different things and try to find what would connect them, right? Like, I know a lot of times for me, a good story idea Sometimes I, I, I have an idea, but it's not enough. And I have this other idea that's not enough. But sometimes if you find how to connect those two different ideas, um, you don't always, but you sometimes, do, like, it generates a new idea, right? When we think of, well, why is this accountant have a relationship with this Mer shark, right? As we try to connect them and give them relationships, it, it, <laughs> which is so hard to do, right? But, but, like, but you make discoveries as you try to make those connections, right, with disparate elements. Really, really quickly, everybody say what's cool about your latest book and just go down the line, because we're going to sign books after this at um, 5 o'clock, right? 5? Um, yeah, actually, yeah. 4 to 5. 
Uh, what time is it? I think, it's, <laughs> I think this is 3.30 to 4.30. Where are we? And then we'll, we'll, we'll sign oh, yeah, books at, at, yeah. at five. At five. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so this book will be, uh, yeah, I'll be signing uh, The Zoo Box, and my wife wrote it. Her name is Arielle Cohn. Uh, one thing that's really cool about it is that uh, I designed it to be a uh, kind of like a Twilight Zone episode for kids. So it's a little bit scary, um, but at the same time, it's serving the interest of uh, developing readers. So, um, you know, fourth grade, or fourth, four year olds to like third grade, it's perfect for. Um, our book, Shivers, The Pirate Who's Afraid of Everything, is a great book, really, I think, for starting around six years old and up. Um, and a fun fact about it is that it has 13 and a half chapters. Uh, my picture book, Rory the Dinosaur, Me and My Dad, is based on uh, characters from my Tumblr blog. And what I love about it is I actually wrote it when I was pregnant, and it's about how the dad always is sort of like a couple steps behind his son making sure he's safe. But I had no clue about parenting at the time. And now I have a two-year-old, and I still have no clue, but I do find that I relate to the dad in the story a lot, which I think is interesting. Uh, my book is called Snoop Troop, and the cool thing about it is it's a mystery that you guys can solve. There's like little illustration clues hidden throughout the book, and you can try to figure it out before the, the heroes do. So. And my book is Ninja Timmy, and it's got a hero cat character, a bunch of other animals uh, set in an imaginary world, and it has a mechanical uh, blue rabbit who wants to uh, steal children's laughter to make himself a soul with. Very cool. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, my latest is called Five Kingdoms. It's about kids that get taken as slaves into another world and have adventures as they try to get free. Um, Thank you guys for coming and appreciate our panelists. Thanks a lot.